this session is uh, is going to cover Calico for Windows on Azure. Um, previously, that was set up as the Calico on AKS. Uh, the, later, there was an advertisement. Not sure if everyone um, got that and uh, registered that the session was changed, but Calico uh, on AKS will run uh, on October, uh, in October. Uh, I think it's scheduled currently for October 15th. Uh, my name is Ivan Sharamok. I'm a solutions architect at Tegera. Um, and what I want to start with is to go briefly through what Project Calico is uh, for people who maybe just starting the journey with Kubernetes and, and the networking solutions uh, in Kubernetes. So the Project Calico is an open source networking solution and policy uh, uh, network policy enforcement solution for Kubernetes. Uh, it can. It, it also works in OpenStack and even outside of that. But the uh, uh, main domain right now uh, uh, in Kubernetes is pretty vibrant uh, community in there, and uh, there are uh, there are lots of changes and lots of things happening in there. So Kubernetes being probably uh, the most uh, hot, uh, the hottest topic uh, at this point. So uh, in this session, I will be covering the. Uh, everything related to Kubernetes for installing Calico for Windows on that. Uh, the uh, architecture of Calico uh, allows it to be super fast in terms of uh, handling, handling the data plane. And that's been, uh, that's been the case because Calico uses leverages just native uh, Linux data plane, which allows it to squeeze out all the performance uh, up to what's, what's possible in uh, Linux. And uh, in addition to overlays that Calico supports, like IP and IP, VXLAN, uh, we also provide known cap uh, networking solution, which for, for the fastest speeds, uh, the, that's probably the best option so that you don't have any overhead in there. Uh, we've uh, worked with many customers, uh, many, uh, many customers from small businesses to large enterprises have adopted uh, Calico and using that as either networking or network policy or both. So it's been proven and tested um, uh, in uh, massively uh, massive clusters. The uh, uh, reliance on BGP for route distribution allows us to, to scale, uh, 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 allows us to scale uh, the clusters to the limits of Kubernetes. And the, uh, um, the success that Calico had uh, in the Kubernetes area allowed us, uh, us to be, uh, uh, the solution to be adopted by all the major cloud providers. Some of them in different variations, some of them offer uh, using Calico for both CNI and network policy, but all of them uh, offer Calico as an option for, uh, for network policy. Uh, and also in uh, package distributions, such as Docker Enterprise, Rancher, uh, OpenShift, uh, I, I, VMware Tanzo also supports that. So uh, as of today, we also know of over 150,000 uh, clusters that run Calico, either Calico, uh, open source or Calico Enterprise. We have a commercial offering as well. And I'll talk about that in a, in a moment. So if you're interested to engage, uh, and or just looking for uh, for any help uh, to get started uh, running into any issues, I encourage you to join the Slack channel. Uh, it has over 4,000 active members in there. Um, I believe right now it's close to 5,000, but still not, not 5,000, so it falls under 4,000 4, plus. Uh, the project itself hosted on, uh, published uh, on GitHub under the Project Calico. Um, account in there, so uh, you can head there, navigate, and take take a look. Uh, in uh, if you are interested, join join the uh, over 150 developers who are actively contributing to the project. Uh, to uh, this slide is to demonstrate uh, the span uh, of Calico, how different different configurations, different. Uh, setups uh, and Kubernetes distributions in particular that uh, support Calico. So on the left-hand side, you see uh, those well-known cloud providers. 
mostly referring to managed their managed solutions like EKS, GKE, AKS, uh, IKS. Um, then uh, next to it goes upstream Kubernetes and packaged solutions like provided by Mirantis, which is Docker Enterprise, OpenShift, uh, also Rancher, VMware, Tanzu, U2IQ, and moving all the way to the right where you can use that uh, on-prem if you're managing clusters yourself, um, building that on bare metals or VMs. And it's worth mentioning that besides just the Kubernetes holes themselves, you can also uh, install Calico uh, agent on the uh, non-Kubernetes nodes and hook them up with your uh, control plane, Kubernetes control plane, and then um, propagate the policies from, from the uh, uh, Kubernetes side to those hosts. So in, in that case, you would have a single source of truth for all your policies stored, but you can actually program the, uh, uh, the policies on non-Kubernetes hosts as well. Um, this, is, uh, this is beyond this topic right now. We have uh, multiple various sessions that we are running. So here's uh, some of those uh, future sessions that are upcoming. And uh, if you're interested uh, in topics like multi-cluster management is a very popular, popular topic. Um, uh, lots of different vendors provide their solutions. Uh, we also offer from the networking standpoint and kind of like security standpoint, um, we provide a multi-cluster management solution. Uh, so we have uh, two sessions that are upcoming, uh, one for visibility and troubleshooting, the other one for federated identity and services. Um, then uh, you, you can probably notice that we cover a lot of uh, topics regarding the network policy. Uh, that's, that's what Kalika shines at. Um, and also across different multiple different uh, distributions of Kubernetes, like uh, some sessions dedicated to AKS, EKS, uh, OpenShift. Uh, so you, you can find uh, lots of different, different things in there. Um, if you want to see the uh, what's upcoming, go check the tagario slash events. Uh, also, uh, every session that we uh, hold, we record that and post to our YouTube channel. So you can find, for instance, I mentioned some sessions about um, using Calico outside of uh, Kubernetes. Uh, that's uh, we covered that in topics uh, regarding the micro segmentation. So you can head to YouTube channel take a look uh, in there. We also run the sessions uh, on a continuous basis, on a weekly basis. So uh, some of them recycle and uh, update the content as the new information comes in. So for today's uh, session, what I would like to cover, I have a few slides that I want to go through just to kind of set the stage and talk about some uh, common aspects of uh, setting up your Kubernetes cluster considerations for setting up the network, uh, network for, uh, for your Linux side and for Windows side. It's uh, uh, once you're working, when you're working and trying to configure cluster with Windows nodes, uh, Calico control plane runs on the Linux side and, and Calico, uh, the Windows nodes uh, being the, the worker nodes would be added to that side. So it's going to be set up as a mixed cluster and uh, pretty much any solution today has that due to the uh, some some lack uh, lack of capabilities on the Windows side. You cannot run the control plane, Kubernetes control plane on Windows side today. Uh, there is a repo on GitHub uh, at Tigera hyphen solutions install Calico for Windows, uh, which covers the commercial product uh, for uh, to install Calico. Um, this session, in this session, I will cover Calico open source and I'll talk about that in a moment. So um, the reason that I'm covering Calico open source today, uh, because we have released um, the open source, the our Windows support, added that to Calico version 3.16.0. Uh, the most recent version is uh, 3.16.1. Uh, as of today, uh, in terms of managed clusters, we support um, Calico for Windows on EKS and AKS, but AKS, it's a little bit more involved installation on that cluster. Uh, we are working on uh, adding, uh, automating that and making 
uh, making that easier to install and also looking into possibility set into to other managed uh, managed solutions. So uh, jumping into uh, Kubernetes and networking considerations for setting up the cluster. So the first uh, first things first, the uh, CIDR selections for for both your pods and your services. Um, it's important in uh, the uh, in the grand scheme of things things are designed in the architecture for your for your network if it's routable network then it's probably a little bit more complicated because you'll have to work closely with your networking team to make sure that you get the uh, the ranges reserved for your cluster and also uh, later in the game as your cluster grows it tends to be a little bit more difficult to resize that cider if you need more capacity more uh, more ips uh, if it's um, non-routable cluster using overlays like ip and ip and vxlan then that that could be uh, uh could be easier typically does not really require to go to and talk to your it team um uh and that that's uh, that's easier to configure by default calico uh, is installed uh, using IP and IP overlay, uh, but depending on how you design your network architecture for the cluster, uh, you'll uh, you'll have to make sure that you provide the correct ciders in there. Default ciders you see on the screen right now, that's what Calico uses, and uh, kubeadm, one of the tools to install Kubernetes uh, cluster, also uses that. So if you're using kubeadm, uh, for you that's going to be very easy to uh, to install that, you you can just pull the uh, Calico installation manifest, which is a YAML file, and just uh, apply that to your Kubernetes cluster. Um, so one note in here, since I'm talking about Windows, on the Windows side, Kube Proxy has some limitation, and that uh, that is that uh, it supports only a single IP block per host. So uh, where that comes into play is that um, now. Uh, since, since there is only a, a single IP per host, uh, you need to make sure that um, you will take into consideration how many containers uh, or uh, pods, um, to be more uh, to be uh, more correct on that, uh, will run on Windows hosts. Uh, because the you uh, once you exhaust your uh, IP block in there, uh, you won't be able to to get a new one. Uh, from the Calico standpoint, uh, the Calico networking considerations, uh, I mentioned that IP and IP is used for Calico, uh, but there is a catch in here for Windows site. On Windows, IP and IP is not um, supported. Uh, you have an option only for VXLAN networking and BGP. Uh, in term, in uh, context of Calico open source, you have uh, only one option in there, that's VXLAN. Uh, with Calico commercial offering, you have both of those available. So you, you can use, uh, you can set up your Windows nodes to peer with your current infrastructure using BGP and not use the uh, overlay. Uh, also, when you're setting up your installing, applying Calico manifest, uh, make sure that your ciders match because you uh, it won't work if it doesn't. Uh, in terms of IP, uh, IP pool block size default Calico IP uh, IP block is slash twenty six, which gives you about sixty four, not about uh, exactly sixty four uh, IP addresses. Uh, for that means that you have uh, on Windows, you have sixty four IP addresses available, but. In addition to that, the Windows networking requires takes out of that pool four IP addresses, which means you 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 are left on sixty. So if your nodes are sized to support only to run only sixty containers or up to sixty um, pods, then you're fine. But if your nodes are sized for much larger capacity, then make sure that you you adjust that setting. And also the uh, deciding for NAT uh, outbound, for instance, by default, that setting is enabled. But if you don't want uh, to do that, uh, you want your, uh, if your network, for instance, is routable, then uh, NATing might not be uh, the option that you want to go with. And you can disable that. 
as uh, as you <clears throat> choose your Windows host, uh, there are some uh, there are some uh, considerations in there as well. That's uh, making sure that you select the right build. So the uh, uh, 1809 and 1903 uh, versions of Windows mentioned here. Uh, today I'm going to use actually the newer version, the 1909. Uh, when you you are using those, make sure that you choose the right build number. So uh, for for that reason, some of the uh, cloud providers uh, they have older builds, which means that um, uh, Calico won't be able to to run those. So uh, that's that's important to to verify before you set up the cluster that you choose the right uh, Windows host. Uh, there are a few features that Windows features that Calico requires. On Windows, and uh, uh, all of this I'll, I'll show you in a moment as I go through the setup. Um, so those uh, routing and direct access VPN, uh, those features need to be installed by by default. They are not enabled on Windows. Uh, and also for kubelet port uh, ten to fifty, that's the default port. Uh, for kubelet, uh, it's better to make sure that you have that open in, in the firewall on Windows side, especially if you're going to um, run the commands like kube uh, exec, exec into uh, a pod, into a, uh, one of the containers uh, in a pod on Windows. If that port is blocked, you won't be able to do that. So a few limitations to mention, uh, as of uh, now, there is no support for operator install. Our uh, uh, operator can install Calico uh, for you on Linux on Windows side due to the lack of some capabilities on Windows, specifically the privileged containers, which do not allow us to run daemon set, which we are using to uh, set the uh, set up the Calico CNI. So right now, that's a, um, a manual installation. Uh, also, the the XLAN mode, which I mentioned on. Uh, in the open source uh, version, you have VXLAN mode only available. In uh, commercial offering, there is uh, Calico Enterprise. Uh, the BGP mode is also available. And <clears throat> once you've configured your network, and if later you decide to change some of the parameters uh, on Windows side, the uh, you you have to uh, you have to uh, drain the network, meaning that you'll have to. Uh, uh, drain all of your containers, uh, Windows containers, uh, then drain the network, and then change those parameters, and then uh, uh, put everything back. Uh, on Windows side, the networking is a little bit uh, more touchy than on the uh, Linux side. So uh, some of the things uh, in there, like some uh, editing of that, uh, uh, is not uh, is not as easy as it's on Linux site, and we'll see some example of that as I go through the setup. Uh, for the uh, policy enforcement, there is Windows DSR feature that is required. Uh, that's another, uh, another point in here that you can set up Calico for networking on Windows, uh, and it will provide you pot-to-pot -pot connectivity. But for policy enforcement, there is Windows DSR feature that is required for that to, to work correctly. Uh, and <clears throat> one of the reasons for that is that um, previously, without this feature, uh, uh, Windows just unconditionally applies uh, the netting to all the packets coming out of uh, pods, which means uh, for for Calico, which kind of uh, uses the labels and targets and uh, uh, uses that to um, to target the uh, uh, the uh, uh, to use the network policies and uh, target the traffic, uh, it becomes impossible to identify from where that traffic is coming because uh, uh, every packet gets the host IP uh, uh, on it. So Windows uh, WinDSR feature is mandatory for policy enforcement in Windows. Uh, one one more time, the upcoming events for for this session before I jump into. Uh, into the console and do hands-on on, on installing the, uh, the cluster. Uh, you'll notice some of the uh, sessions are in EU time zone. So if uh, you are joining 
from EU, um, you'll see that uh, uh, this sessions uh, as well as other sessions, they will eventually show up in the EU uh, time zone, but uh, there is some, uh, some time between that. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, uh, one more thing before I go uh, to the console that uh, if you are interested in testing out Calico Enterprise, we have a trial available, which gives you provisions the cluster for you so you don't have to go and set things up yourself uh, you'll get uh, a console and the browser url to to access the ui uh, of Calico enterprise and you then can can go and uh, test the scenarios that you want to verify okay uh, let me so let me switch over here um, let me show my cluster that I've, uh, I've set up the Linux side already so that we don't have to spend uh, time on that boring activity. Uh, you can see that my nodes right now are not ready, meaning that there is no CNI in those nodes. Uh, and I have only two, um, uh, two nodes, master and worker. Uh, both of those are, uh, let me show labels and you'll see both of those are Linux. Yeah, you can see uh, this uh, community SIO OS shows that both of those are uh, my Linux, my Linux nodes. Okay. Um, let me check if there are any questions. Okay, no questions so far. Uh, if you have any question, please don't hesitate to test it, uh, to to post it uh, either in, in the QA or in the, uh, in the chat. I'll I'll be checking that from time to time, and at the end uh, we'll try to answer any questions you have. Um, so uh, I have my uh, initial cluster uh, set up. Uh, one thing that is left in there is to go and uh, set up Calico. So for which uh, I'm going to uh, jump to the Calico uh, installation guide. Uh, so it's docs.projectcalico.org. You can find a section for uh, Calico for Windows and uh, go through it to to see what's required to to install as well as there are other sections like uh, there's expanded section on uh, the known issues and limitations I recommend you to go through that to better understand what limitations exist uh, when you're uh, when you're using uh, Windows nodes Uh, so uh, uh, what I need to do right now is to install Calico CNI on my cluster. And for that, I'm going to, uh, to download Calico Manifest. Here is my Calico Manifest. Um, let me actually show it right here. Um, so the uh, default uh, setup in here, uh, if I take a look for a PAP. Uh, here, here it is. So by default, uh, Calico uses IP and IP, uh, which is enabled and you can see VXLAN is disabled. So I'm going to run a few commands in here to change all of that. And um, the commands that I'm running um, right now, they are available as a part of the uh, GitHub repo, uh, install Calico for Windows. Uh, there is a note in here that uh, this, uh, this repo or in this guide was built to install the commercial product, uh, but what uh, might be useful for you if you're trying to start quickly in here to use this cluster scripts to build either cluster in AWS or in Azure. I'm using Azure today. So, I need to do some editing to my Calico script, uh, Calico YAML, Calico Manifest. So now you can see I got only my IP uh, VXLAN left in here uh, and it's set to all. So now I will have my VXLAN uh, enabled once I install it. And after that, just go and apply the Calico Manifest. And let's take a look. So you can see that uh, it's coming up. There is a kube controller that's uh, 
first thing that you'll see that Kube, Kube controller uh, coming up and uh, then try and color the nodes um, getting installed on each of the uh, available nodes in here. So now you can see uh, the core DNS also now is pending from, from continue creating uh, or uh, it, it's in pending state because uh, it runs as a deployment using the cluster APs uh, while uh, most of the uh, Kubernetes control plane uses the host networking, meaning that they are just binding to the IPs on, on the hosts. So um, uh, any container or any pod that is uh, that is not using the host networking needs to wait for the CNI, Kubernetes CNI to be available. So now you can see all of, all of my uh, pods are running. So I've got the CNI installed and you can verify that if we just get our nodes, you can see the status is ready now from previously being not ready. Uh, one uh, requirement for using uh, Calico, uh, Calico for Windows is that you need to set a, a strict affinity. Uh, you, you need to enable that uh, in Calico IPAM. The reason for that is uh, on Linux, you have a feature called IP borrowing that allows uh, Calico, once the uh, pool is exhausted on the node, it allows it to borrow available IPs from, from other uh, blocks from other nodes if, if they have available those. Uh, since on Windows, only a single block is supported, that IP borrowing uh, uh, is not supported. You, you cannot use that. So therefore, we have to enforce that there is a strict affinity that each block that is assigned can be used only on the node where it's assigned to. So let's uh, run this. And IPAM show configuration will, will show us the configuration. Well, one thing to note in here, I'm using Calico CDL, which is a utility provided by Calico, uh, similar to kubectl. Uh, and for this command, IPAM configure, uh, that's available in uh, since release uh, of Calico 3.16.0. So if you're using uh, Calico CDL that is older, uh, you won't be able to use this command until you upgrade to the newer version of Calico CDL. So since I have my Linux site set up, now let's go and switch to, to my uh, Windows cluster. So in this one, uh, I got a note, and let me show you the, the version of the note. So this is my build number, um, 18363, and uh, you can see this is my release, 1909. Uh, since I built this uh, cluster using the scripts in the repo that I showed you, uh, all of the features were already set up. They are baked into uh, those scripts. Uh, so just to show you that uh, all these features need to be enabled and uh, also the service remote access need to be running on the machine uh, for, for Calico to, to get set up correctly. Um, one thing that... Uh, So uh, what I'm going to use for a quick setup, I'm going to grab the kube um, uh, config file from masternode. For a specific setup or more secure setup, you can go and um, explore the documentation. There is, uh, in the docs, there is a section uh, that explains uh, how to configure, uh, how to configure the kube uh, uh, config for Windows nodes. Uh, today I'm just get, going to use the uh, uh, the kube config that I already downloaded from Masternode. It's right here. Uh, so I need to transfer it into the uh, directory on the uh, on the C drive. So on the C drive, all the Kubernetes components are going to be installed at the C K folder. Uh, so I'm going to make that folder because I need to transfer the component uh, the uh, uh, config file. And um, this is a, uh, right now we are working on simplifying this so that you don't have to manually uh, um, manually do the transferring. Okay, 
So I've got my gate folders. Now I'm going to move So the next thing is to um, grab this uh, in the installation guide right here. You have the uh, Windows, uh, uh, install Calico Windows PS1, uh, the PowerShell script that will be uh, configuring, uh, doing some configuration on the Windows node itself and then installing Calico. I already pre-pulled the script, so uh, I'm going to run it. But before I do that, um, I'll show you Uh, there is uh, there is one thing in here that I had to tweak, which uh, I discovered yesterday. There, were, there was an issue in the latest uh, push of the script that I uh, discovered yesterday. So I had to adjust this. I had to add this line, uh, which right now that's a workaround. Uh, we, we have an issue on this, uh, and this will be fixed, and you won't need to do this uh, in future. But right now, if you will jump into this, uh, today or tomorrow, um, then oh, or sometime this week, then you might uh, just remember that you'll have to go and uh, edit the script before you run it so that uh, it executes correctly. Uh, there is, I'll show you in a moment, so there's another. Um, so now I can run my script to install. Uh, uh, Kubernetes. So I'm I'm using one uh, eighteen eight. I was trying to get the uh, latest version nineteen point one, but there are no Windows component for that version yet. So uh, I had to use the latest from from this one. Uh, there will be one error that happens. It's uh, trying to curl the metadata, and the reason for this is that this script is trying to identify whether this is uh, Azure or AWS and pull in the metadata address for AWS format, which on Azure, obviously, that's not available. Uh, we are working on addressing that as well. So once, uh, once uh, this script, what it does, it installs, it pulls the uh, necessary uh, uh, Kubernetes components, like you can see there, kubectl uh, is pulled and others. Um, uh, kubelet is pulled. Uh, Calico for Windows, the open source version of that, uh, then it will install two Windows services for Calico, uh, the Calico node and Calico Felix, uh, and uh, we'll start those up. And uh, those services depend on, uh, then we'll uh, look for Kubernetes components to be running in order to set up the rest of the uh, networking. So once uh, so uh, here's an example of that fragility of uh, Windows networking stack. So whenever something happens to it, you lose connection. So that, that uh, little interruption in the networking, uh, that's uh, very typical to whenever you're doing changes to, to the Windows networking. So um, let's take a look. Okay, so I got my Calico Felix and Calico Node services set up. And before I move on, let me show you where you can find certain things in here. So uh, Windows uh, Cal Calico components are installed on uh, into the Calico Windows folder. And Kubernetes components are installed into the CK folder. So if we take a look into Calico Windows folder, uh, <clears throat> to, uh, for instance, if you're troubleshooting something, here are some scripts like uninstall Calico if you want to reinstall it or start-stop scripts. Uh, you can take a look at the configuration file, which is going to be in the CNI folder. Uh, can uh, also look into the logs, uh, which provides you uh, logs from the uh, uh, from the services, uh, Calico node and Calico Felix services that are running. And uh, if you are looking for the kubelet logs, then you will go into the K folder and uh, look into in, in, into this folder. Uh, right now, there are no, no Kubernetes services running. That's why we don't have those. Uh, so a next step for us is to install uh, the remaining um, Kubernetes services, which uh, there is a script in here uh, in the Calico Windows folder slash Kubernetes, install kube services. That's what I'm going to run. 
and this will uh, create my kubelet and kube proxy uh, services. And um, let me get those. Uh, okay, so they are stopped. Oh, let me do. Let me start them and then make sure that they are running now. Okay, so now uh, all of those are running. Since both services are running now, uh, I should get. Okay, so I got my Windows node. It's joined right now, waiting for the CNI piece to be uh, finalized in there. And I probably can watch that. Yeah, okay, so it's done. Now I got my three nodes. Uh, two Linux nodes, master, uh, one master, one worker, and I got my one of my uh, Windows workers joined to the cluster. So the next step, uh, next thing that I want to uh, go through and show you some examples how to work with the policies, and I'm going to use some examples posted in this repo. If you scroll down to the application and test scenarios, well, this one's deploy um, to run the connectivity tests. So what I'm going to do is to deploy uh, three stacks, two for Linux, Nginx, NetShoot, and, and one for uh, Windows, which is uh, IS stack. Oh, uh, I need to get that. Okay. Uh, the Windows container will take about uh, one and a half, maybe two minutes to, uh, to start running. Uh, that's due to the size of the uh, um, Windows images. It's approximately, uh, right now it's a little less than a, a gigabyte, but it's still uh, heavier than, than Linux uh, images. Therefore, it takes some time to, uh, to get the, those pulled. So let's see if there are any questions that I can answer for the time being. Okay, I don't see any. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please pose those, and I will cover those. Uh, so one uh, before, uh, since it's getting um, the image getting pulled, uh, one thing that I, I would like to mention in here, as you start your journey with um, Kubernetes network policies, it is easier to start using just the ingress policies. Um, before you jump into the egress policies. And the reason for that is, uh, and I'll show some, some of the examples in here uh, in a moment, but the reason for that is that for ingress, you're targeting uh, the, uh, the way policies work, like uh, uh, in Kubernetes, uh, Calico uses the same approach. It uses the Kubernetes labels to, uh, to create those network policies and target specific uh, flows for specific pods. And when you create a policy, you have a selector that applies that policy to a specific group of pods using the, uh, the labels. So for ingress, since you target a specific group of pods, you can deny or allow traffic just to that group of pods. But for egress, you uh, typically run into scenarios that you need to know some, you need to have some intrinsic knowledge on how Kubernetes works and uh, what can break if you deny certain flows. Uh, specifically, um, if you have no policies uh, in your cluster, no network policies, all the traffic can uh, flow freely between all, the, all of the pods. Uh, Kubernetes has a flat uh, network, uh, flat, uh, flat networking approach, so all the, uh, the pods can talk to each other. But once you start applying policies and defining certain flows, uh, that's kind of like a, it works like a switch. It only allows traffic for the flows that you have explicitly defined in your policies. Meaning that if you uh, create a policy, egress policy to allow specific pods to communicate over a certain pod uh, with other pods, then all the other flows are going to be de denied. And uh, what typically happens once when you apply, uh, or uh, I wouldn't say typically, but a, a common scenario, one, once you apply the egress policy and do not account for how your applications uh, talk to each other in Kubernetes, then you can run into a situation that 
uh, all of a sudden your uh, if you're using Kubernetes service, all of a sudden your your applications cannot talk to each other. And that's the reason because the Kubernetes service requires the resolution uh, of that service to, to a cluster IP. Okay, so uh, my Windows node is up and running. So let's check some of those scenarios. I So the first, uh, let's see, confirm that I can communicate, uh, can, uh, curl look up, uh, look up the service nginx service from within the netshoot. Both of those are on Linux side. So from netshoot container, I can look up the service and I can curl my uh, uh, my nginx and do the same for for the IIS side for the uh, Windows pods. So I can do the same. I can resolve it. You can see. Uh, the, this is the uh, DNS server that is used uh, in my Kubernetes cluster. And I can look up both of the uh, uh, service uh, uh, FQDNs within this cluster and resolve them to cluster IP. Okay, so the next thing th uh, that I'm going to do, um, I'm going to grab this. I will use this later in some of the examples. So I'm going to get in the IS pod name. So now let's do uh, run the commands to, to demonstrate that from uh, Windows, my Windows pod, which is IS, I can do the same thing. I can resolve the DNS, I can test the connection over port 80, and I can curl my Nginx service from within my uh, IS pod, which uh, is running on Windows side. So you can see here is my DNS getting resolved. Here's my response from the uh, Nginx. So everything seems to be working fine. Now, um, I have a few policies in here, and if you follow the flow, we, you kind of would not notice uh, that there is something wrong. What I'm going to do is kind of step out of that to demonstrate and show you what is going to happen if you are applying your uh, egress, uh, if you're using egress policies. So I have two policies in here, allow IIS egress to Nginx and allow Nginx ingress from IIS. So let's take a look at this. Um, before I deploy, or deploy this first. So I got two of my policies deployed. And let's take a look at the policies. So here's the uh, Nginx ingress. Uh, so this is, you can see, API is networking KAS IO, which means that's a standard Kubernetes policy. Uh, all Kubernetes uh, policies are namespaced. So I have my namespace default defined in here. If you don't, then it, it automatically falls into the default namespace. Um, and then you, uh, here is the definition. This policy applies to any pod that has a label run Nginx. It's an ingress policy. There is ingress rule in here, uh, which says the traffic from any pod with label run IS over port TCP 80 is allowed. And for my egress policy, also Kubernetes policy, in the default namespace, this applies to IS pod, the, any pod that has run IS label. And the uh, egress rule, the traffic to pod run Nginx over port TCP 80 is allowed. So now let's test the connectivity here. I have my IS pod and try to talk to the Nginx. So now, now you see for some reason the request is hanging. Uh, there is, uh, I believe the, uh, <clears throat> uh, and uh, even though I have, a, uh, I have a timeout in here, it took some time to kind of uh, uh, to fail, and the reason for that is that it cannot resolve the Nginx service. And uh, just returning back to my policy in here, you see that egress from Nginx is defined for only this flow TCP80. As I mentioned before, once you turn in your policies and define at least one rule to affect um, a specific flow direction, either ingress or egress, everything else is denied. So now communications over port UDP port 53 to my DNS server are not allowed from this pod. That's the reason why you cannot, uh, I cannot get to that. So let's fix that. 
and uh, apply a few things in here, and I'll talk about this in a moment. So I'm I'm going to label cube uh, system uh, namespace and show that this is my label in here, and then apply the uh, the DNS uh, allow allow DNS policy. So now let's check my uh, access to now you can see it's re resolved now. And uh, all I've done in here within the allow DNS, uh, so I'm saying that um, this is the notation that applies to all the pods within my default namespace. I'm saying that for all of my pods within default namespace, allow the traffic to any pod with the label KDS app cube DNS as long as that pod within uh, the namespace that has this label and it goes over UDP 53. So by doing this, uh, effectively, I just allowed all the pods to talk to the uh, uh, to, to the DNS. Um, just for fun, let's uh, modify this a little bit. Let's delete this policy. I'm not sure another thing that's, so and make sure that we no longer can resort, uh, resolve. So the reason this is happening because I'm trying to access my Nginx over the uh, service, Kubernetes service, Nginx SPC, and now this is failing. Uh, fail, okay. So if I do this now, if I go and grab the IP address, direct IP address of Nginx pod, which is this, and use it in my query instead of the service IP, I should be able to reach that pod directly. Right, I can reach this pod, but I cannot go over the service, which is typically the setup, setup that, that you would have in Kubernetes, at least if you're building cloud native applications and not the legacy stuff. For legacy stuff, there are those cases where you would use the direct IP addresses. So let's do apply my DNS policy backs, make sure that I have my curl working. Okay. So let's return back to uh, to my policies. Okay, so we verified that uh, IS can talk to Nginx, and let's check whether NetShoot can talk to Nginx because I have policy in place oh, that uh, I have policy in place that, uh, place that says ingress to Nginx is allowed only from IS spot. So let's double check that. Here's my Nginx ingress, and it says only pods with run IS can talk to Nginx. So now my NetShoot is not able to talk to that. So the next set of policies, um, I'm going to use uh, Calico policies uh, in here. So for uh, for th some of those, I'll, I'll be using uh, Calico CTL. So let's, uh, yeah, before I do this, let's double check whether my Nginx can, uh, my, my NetShoot pod can talk to uh, to the IS. And you can see that this one right now, NetShoot cannot uh, talk to IS. Uh, even though IS pod does not really have the ingress policy defined, you can see that it has egress. I have my policy for uh, allow Nginx uh, Nginx ingress, IS egress, and my cube DNS. So I can double check that if I uh, get the network policies. Here are all, all my network policies in the cluster, right? I have only three of those, and none of those says that uh, NetShoot cannot talk to my, uh, to my IIS pod. Uh, but remember what I mentioned before, that once you have a single policy, uh, a, defined a single rule that controls uh, who can do what uh, in terms of the flow. Uh, all of a sudden, all those flows, you need to explicitly whitelist what you allow. Because I have this allow DNS, which applies to all of the pods, which means it applies to uh, NetShoot. Now, this is the only flow that is allowed for the NetShoot. So to fix that, let's apply the uh, NetShoot egress policy. and make sure that I can talk to my IIS now. 
So now you, you can see that once you start using uh, egress policies, uh, you will have to take into consideration the uh, intricacies of inter internal operations of Kubernetes. Some specific is resolution of the uh, services of the Kubernetes services. Um, I think there are a few. Okay, so uh, here are a few examples of Calico policy. So one says allow IS ingress to uh, IS uh, ingress except NetShoot. So effectively, this Calico policy, if deployed, it will override what I just uh, uh, the flow that I just uh, enabled for NetShoot to talk to IS and then allowing Nginx egress to IIS. So now Nginx will be able to, to curl this. And just to confirm that, let's run the commands trying to curl before I apply those policies. So here's my net shoot can talk to IIS and my uh, Nginx cannot talk to IIS. And now run this too. and try that one more time. So now my net shoot is not able to access IS. I effecti effectively uh, overrode the, the rule that I deployed for, for that before with the Kubernetes policies using Calico network policy. One thing to note in here that if it's Calico network policy, uh, you would see the API version uh, Calico uh, to be projectcalico.org. Uh, also, you get the ability to define global network policies, which live outside of the ne uh, namespace um, concept in Kubernetes. So now this policy using selector all applies to all the pods in my cluster, regardless of the namespace. One thing to note in here that I, in, in the documentation, you'll, you'll see that as well. This is just a simple example, but uh, on Windows site, it's better not to use uh, all, uh, not, not to apply the policy to all of the endpoints. And the reason for that is that on Windows side, the networking uh, is not as performant. So if you have a large cluster with like thousands or tens of thousands of uh, pods in there, uh, the policies that are very broad uh, can cause uh, on the Windows no nodes uh, can, uh, can uh, s start uh, consuming uh, uh, CPU. You, you can you can start seeing some CPU and memory spikes in there. So it's uh, for the Windows side. That's always better to have targeted policies. And here is my uh, another uh, Calico policy. But now this is namespace policy. You can see it's just networks uh, network policy in default namespace. Uh, the concept of where you define the selector is a little bit different. It's more friendly to uh, to uh, anyone who, who wrote a line of code where you would see just regular um, uh, logical operators in there. Uh, also, uh, Calico policies add the ordering number in here in the, uh, in the policy definition, which allows you to kind of bump up the policy against other policies that you've deployed. So effectively, uh, every Kubernetes policy uh, that is deployed and enforced with Calico engine gets an order default order of a thousand. You cannot define that in Kubernetes policy itself because Kubernetes does not support that concept. Uh, you, you, you won't have that, but uh, when Calico evaluates them, it considers that any Kubernetes policy has an order of a, a thousand. So the reason I was able to override my previous policy, uh, Kubernetes policy for NetShoot with the Calico networking policy is because my order in here is just set to 100. And uh, this is pretty much it, what I wanted to cover in this session. If you have any questions, please uh, post them. So I'll open this to your chat. And if you don't have any questions, I'll show you one more time the, set, the upcoming sessions for uh, the upcoming sessions for um, 
uh, for our events. Uh, you can always get the latest at tagera.io events. And all of the, uh, here's the schedule for next, uh, for next month. So we'll talk about the uh, networking policies on GKE, uh, some troubleshooting techniques. Uh, we'll have a few multi-cluster management sessions, network policies on OpenShift. Uh, we'll um, run a comparison session that's always um, good to kind of explore how uh, the differences between the upstream Kubernetes uh, concepts and uh, the uh, advances and additions that Calca makes, makes to, to that model. Uh, so that if you are using uh, those, if you have Calico enforcing your policies, you know uh, when it makes sense for you to switch to Calico, so some of the gaps that Kubernetes has, Kubernetes network policies have that you cannot easily solve or requires you uh, to invest uh, more time and effort into that. Uh, one of those being that uh, you, if you're using Kubernetes policies, you always need to make sure that uh, your policies, every namespace has a policy deployed, especially if you're trying to adopt the zero trust networking concept. Uh, you will need to make sure and you have uh, processes in place that will ensure that any creation of a new namespace will have a policy deployed uh, to that namespace to, let's say, deny all the traffic by default. So with, um, with Calico global network policy, that's just one policy to implement. With Kubernetes, that requires some operational uh, alignment. Okay, I do not see any questions in any of the Q and A or uh, or the chat. Uh, I assume that at the moment there are no questions. Um, thank you for attending the session. I'm going to wrap this up, and we'll uh, hope you will. Uh, join other sessions um, that we will uh, will be conducting in uh, in the following days. Uh, have a good day. Bye.